I'm going to show you how to use Lightroom to merge an HDR image together and Photoshop to do some editing using a technique called luminosity masking. HDRs are multiple images combined together. For this example, I have three images. These are raw images, so Windows will not give me a preview of what the pictures look like. HDRs work better when you use RAW, but you can use JPEG if you need to. I'm just going to drag them into Lightroom, making sure I'm in the Library tab, and it will give me three images, and it will actually show me what these images are. I'm going to import them, and come over to Develop. I have one image that is a neutral exposure, one that is a dark exposure, and one that is a bright exposure. And this will allow us to get all of the details in the shadows, in the highlights, and have a baseline as well. There is a little bit of movement going throughout the images, and that is okay. Lightroom can figure that out. I have three images. I'm going to select all of them. I selected the first image, then shift left click on the last image of my sequence and I'm going to right click and come up to Photo Merge and HDR. That will bring up a new window and it will generate a preview of your HDR. I'm going to leave Auto Align on and I'm going to turn off Auto Settings. Auto Settings will do its best to edit your image for you and it's best to do it yourself. Deghosting is how much it compensates for movement in your picture. If you have a lot of movement, you'll have to have a higher deghosting. So if it was very windy and you had a lot of leaves moving, you might need to turn it up. Or if someone walked through the picture and you have them in three different locations, you'd have to turn it up a lot or even retake the pictures. I usually leave it on medium and I'm going to hit merge. You can create a stack which is like a group. So if you have a lot of images here, it will group them in a folder to make them a little bit easier to find. But since they're the only pictures I have, I'm going to keep them as it is. It will take a little bit of time to merge, and you'll have the progress bar on the top right. I mean left. Now that it is done, we have a fourth image down here. And it has two little boxes next to it, and that just says that there have been some edits made to the image. I'm going to click on it and it won't really look any different. However, where it is different is our, our exposure settings. We come back to our first image. Our exposure tab over here, it can go to negative five to positive five, meaning five stops of light, and we can bring in a lot of that detail in the lights and darks. With an HDR, if you bring it down, you can go down to negative 10 and positive 10, meaning it has a lot more information in this image. And this is where we can start doing some edits. I'm going to bring up my shadows, cover some of that information that was lost, especially on the island, bring down some of the highlights and maybe some of the lights. Texture is a type of sharpening. You can definitely go too far in both directions. Dehaze will try to get rid of any smog in the picture. I generally don't use it. It doesn't always work that well. And vibrance and saturation will increase your color or decrease them. And again, it's very easy to go too far with vibrance and saturation. I do have a little bit of lens dirt on my lens. You can see right here on this cloud there's a little smudge. I'm going to get rid of that. And you can do that with the healing or a spot removal brush. And I'm using the scroll wheel to make it bigger. And I'm just going to click on the area. And it will do its best to sample from somewhere in the image to cover it up. 
you can drag it, this circle around and change where it gets information from. There might be a few other spots that need cleaning, but that's okay. So for right now, I'm fairly happy with how this looks, and I want to bring this into Photoshop to do some more edits. I'm going to right click on my HDR and go to edit in Adobe Photoshop. It will open up Photoshop for you and import your image in. So here we are in Photoshop. I have my one layer, which is the same image as my HDR was in Lightroom. And we're going to do frequency separation, which allows us to control the red, green, and blue channels with adjustment layers. And it's a very powerful way to edit and very common for HDRs. In my layers box, I should have channels right next to it. If not, you can find it in the window and come down to channel. And I have red, green, blue, and RGB. You can turn them on and off. So this is just my blue channel just my green channel and just my red channel or you can combine different channels together to see which each one to see what each one is and I want to make edits to just the red just the green and just the blue on separate layers so if I click on it it will just isolate that channel if I click RGB it will all come back if I hold down control on Windows or I believe command on a Mac and click on red it will select everywhere that there are the red values. And come back to my Layers tab. And at the very bottom, we have this circle that is half black, half white, and it says Create a new fill or adjustment layer. And clicking on it, I'm going to create a Curves adjustment layer. And with my curves, you are able to click and put a dot on this straight line and adjust the values. So you can bring them down or bring them up and it is very easy to go too far and very common you will have what is called an S curve. And it just makes a very soft S and it will affect the areas where there are the red values. So coming back to layers I have a new curves adjustment and you can see it brings a little bit more color, a little bit more detail with it on. I'm going to rename this to red. So I know that was my red channel. I'm going to go back to my channels and control or command click on my green layer and now I have a slightly different selection that has all of the green values. Going back to my layers tab I'm going to add another curves adjustment layer. You don't have to have a, an S curve it really can be whatever you want to make it better or whatever you think makes it better. And if you don't like what you did, go back to properties and you can change it around. And I'll rename this one green. And finally I have my blue and I'm going to control click on blue. adjustments do not need to be the same as mine, but I do want this to be a little bit brighter. And rename this layer blue. You can now go and add any adjustments that you want, and we have all of them available to us. You can add a levels adjustment. Hue and saturation, you can 
change the colors very dramatically and get more of a stylized look to it. Vibrance adjustment layer is very similar to the vibrance and saturation we had access to in Lightroom and it will increase the colors that we have or if you drag it down it will make it more black and white and again it is very easy to push it a little bit too far and when you're happy with it you can zoom in make sure that everything is looking good and I always look for other spots that might need removing the lens that I'm using is a little bit dirty so I do have some streaks in it but nothing that you couldn't get rid of in Photoshop when you're done Make sure you save as a Photoshop document. I'm just going to put it on the desktop, giving it the name of HDR Lab, last name, and first name. <laughs> 